In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate tapping a couple of different hole patterns, using the Mesa Troll programming system. Start, by navigating to the program page. I have an existing program I'll be adding these tapped holes to. I'll verify I'm in the right program, and select Program Edit. I'm going to drill, chamfer and tap these 6 1 quarter 20 holes. At the bottom of the existing program, I'll start a new unit and select Point Machining. When choosing the machining unit, always choose the final state of the hole. In this case we want the hole to be tapped, but that includes drilling and chamfering. To specify the use of carbide tooling, I'll highlight High Speed Drill Use, and select Tapping. For type of tap, I can select Metric, Unified, and 3 pipe tap choices. My tap is a unified tap. To specify the exact tap, I can use a numerical tap, describe the tap fractionally, or choose the desired tap from an internal list. I'll describe the tap fractionally. To do so, I first highlight the quarter key. Using the keypad, I'll enter 1, for 1 quarter, a dash for a separator, then 20 for 20 threads per inch. When I press input, major diameter, thread pitch and chamfer width are set automatically based on industry standards. I can change these if I wish, but the values shown are fine. The thickness of my part is 0.3 inches, so I'll tap 0.35 inches deep. It is important to remember, the control assumes you want full threads at this depth so the tap will, by default, go deeper. Chamfer given is width per side. And no, I don't want to clean the chips out with a chip vac. The control has selected a 0.21 drill and I'll verify that by looking in the tool data window. I have a 0.21 drill so I'll highlight it and click on OK. The rest of these settings were covered in the last tutorial, so I'll go right to cutting speed. I'll use Carbide Auto to set my SFM and feed rate, and set an M51 for through tool coolant. The center drill selected here is to create my chamfer, so I'll highlight the point 8 and open the tool data window. I have a 1 inch 90 degree spot drill to use for the chamfer, the settings look good, and I'll use Carbide Auto for SFM and feed rate. For coolant, I'll shut off the through tool coolant with an M9 and turn on M8 flood coolant. For my tap, the control has chosen the correct tap. Hole diameter is correct at 0.25. Tap depth is given as 0.35 full thread depth. It's important to examine this depth a bit, to see how far down the tap is actually going to go. There are two things that could make the tap go deeper than expected. First, in tool data, check to see if there is any length comp entered. If so, the value in this setting will be added to the depth of the tap. Second, there is parameter D30, setting number of incomplete threads. If you want to change this value for only this instance, it is available as a TPC setting. TPC contains parameters specifically used in this type of unit. Changing a parameter here changes it for only this instance, the base parameter remains unchanged. This setting, currently 3, tells the control the tap has three incomplete threads before it reaches full thread diameter. This means the control will plunge the tap down three times the pitch of the thread deeper beyond the program depth of the tap. In our case, that would be an extra 150 thousandths. Based on the settings shown, the tap will go to a depth of 0.5 inches. Looking at our drill depth, we can see the drill is drilling deep enough to clear the tap. Sometimes I'll add just a bit to the drill depth for extra clearance. Available cutting patterns include tap pecking 1 and 2, and a planetary threading cycle for special tools. I'll use a simple tapping cycle. This is a fixed tap for rigid tapping. Putting a dwell time here would assume a floating tap. Pitch is correct. I'll use high speed steel auto to set the speed. And an M8 for flood coolant. For a point cutting pattern I'll use a simple square. The holes are at Z0. The first hole is at minus 5.45 in X, and minus 1.25 in Y. The angle of the first line is 90 degrees. The angle between the lines is 90 degrees. The pitch between holes in the first line is 1.25 inches. The pitch between holes in the second line is 1 inch. My dimensions are given as the pitch. There are three holes in the first line and two holes in the second line. I do not want to omit any holes. 
and I'll return to initial Z between holes rather than the R plane. Highlighting the unit shows the holes we have just made in the graphic window. Before going to simulation, I'm going to quickly use 3D Assist to help me program these 15 random 1024 tapped holes. I'll start the unit the same way as the previous one, highlighting high speed drill use, and choosing tapping. This is a unified thread, and I'll use nominal diameter select, to pop up the selection window. I'll select the 1024 option and click OK. Diameter pitch and chamfer are set for me. I just need to set the depth to 0.35. Drill selection looks good, only requiring me to set my SFM, feed rate and coolant. I'll change the center drill to my 1 inch, 90 degree tool and set my SFM, feed rate and coolant. Cap selection is good and I'll use high speed steel auto to set SFM and specify flood coolant. For the point cutting pattern, I'll select the right hand menu button, then 3D assist. I will not be going into the specifics of how to use 3D assist here, it will be covered in a later tutorial. My purpose here, is to demonstrate how much of a time saver 3D assist can be when selecting multiple holes. As you can see, 3D assist understands that I am in a point cutting unit, so it has automatically selected hole auto. I just have to zoom in and select one of the desired holes. All of the similar holes on the same plane are automatically selected. Clicking input brings the point location of all these holes into my program. Highlighting the unit shows the holes in my part. With both tapping processes done, I'll add a temporary end unit. And go to simulation to verify my work. Everything looks good here. Tools are brought out in the right order and the holes look like they're in the right place. Going back to the program, I'll delete the temporary end unit and I'm ready to continue programming the part. <laughs>